everyone so here we've got an image by Leah beautiful image the baby's gorgeous and I absolutely love the wrap the colors are stunning love it um, this is very tricky I know you said you sorted it now I'm so sorry it's taken me forever to do a second one um, but yeah it's very tricky um, so this is what I would do I know you've done it already but um, so here we can see it's nice and sharp lovely job all right uh, I don't think there's any quick way of doing it I mean maybe there is I mean even if there's actions that do it you could be at risk of over smoothing or whatever um, this is the way I would attempt to do it all right so the first thing I would do is I would get the healing tool and I would go over any of these little red dots spots um, and try and clear a lot of the as much of the area as you can so we want to try and keep the skin texture intact if we can sometimes it just doesn't work but we should be able to get rid of a fair amount because then once we've got an area of clear skin, then we can use the patch tool, possibly. This is tricky down here. Lots and lots of little red spots. I know it's time consuming. No. Because you have to do such tiny areas. Oh, where did I get? Oh. Um, but I feel that this way means that um, we're keeping her skin intact because by using the clone tool. Oops. If you go wrong, just do Command Z. To go back again. Um, I just lately I've been trying not to smooth the baby's skin so much. Um, oh Once you get to bigger areas, it gets a bit tricky. But we're clearing this left side quite nicely. These ones are going to be tricky. No. Nope. If there's a reasonable amount of surface area around where we're cloning, then it would be fine. Cloning doesn't like to to uh, be too close to the... Oh, that was from earlier, wasn't it? Too close to the edge of anything. Okay. Couple here. This is like okay. All right, we're getting there now. So if we just come out now and see where we're at. So if we go to before and after. Okay. So we just take a little snapshot. So we go to history. Go down to the little camera icon and then that will record uh, the stages up until this point so now we can see before and after so far all right so now I'm going to try the patch tool it still may not work but I'll give it a go mm, blurred it a bit No. All right, so I think that's the best we can do at the moment. Now I'm going to duplicate the layer 
and go up to filter camera raw then we're going to come down to the color mixer and we're only really interested in the reds here so the reds the hue I'm going to move the reds towards the oranges by about that much so plus 24 and then the saturation it's gonna bring it down maybe about there and then the luminance gonna bring that up to mm, around about 31 32 33 32 uh, once we've done that then we need to click OK and then obviously at the moment the baby's now incredibly pale we've lost all the red in the entire image so we really just want to paint it back onto the areas that are of concern um, I duplicated the layer already but now I'm going to come down here and click on this layer mask and then you can see it's white but I want to turn it black so I need to do command I and that turns it black then we need to click on the brush tool uh, 100% is fine so we need to make sure it's on white so now we can paint onto the other areas like the very red areas I mean, when a baby has acne like this, it's going to take a while. Unless, you know, you smooth the hell out of it. Which is fine. Sometimes I end up doing that. <laughs> if I don't have much time. Right. Okay. These are so tricky down here. Right, let's see. So let's come away. So you can see where it's a little bit light where I've gone outside. So we can just switch it back to black and paint back on. So only the spots are affected. Oops. Okay, let's see now. And then I'm just going to drop the opacity down a bit. Alright, let's zoom out to see where we're at. Okay. Let's try taking it up again. But Alright, I'm just going to leave it like that. So um, the opacity is only down a tiny bit, 11%. I'm going to flatten that and now we're going to try the patch tool again see if we can have any more joy with this now so it doesn't mind it so much now it's still not brilliant okay let's try the sport healing tool I think I said clone tool earlier I didn't mean clone tool alright okay So, I mean, if um, you're presenting images to a client, you know, maybe I'd edit one and then edit the images that they choose. Don't edit all of them, so it'll take you forever. Let's have one more go here. Let's see. No. All right. It's looking a lot better though, so if we take a little snapshot. 
and then we go to the top so this is how we started this was stage one and then this is stage two come back to layers now I am going to play the complete baby quick fix by LSP and then come down I'm going to do uh, reduce the reds it's at 100% Whack it up a bit, the, the um, brush size. Now, it, like, it doesn't seem to do a lot, does it? But, okay. And now I can just up that. So the good thing is we've done all this without affecting the baby's texture too much. Um, we could try warming the skin a touch. And um, soft skin, whack it up to 100. And then just go over these little areas. Right, let's zoom in. So make sure you don't go near the edges. All right, so I'm just going to come back out now. <coughs> She's got a little frown on at me. Um, I'm just going to bring that down. I don't know which one's making it look a bit yellow. I think it's that one. So I'm going to. Uh, no, I'm going to leave it as it is. Um, reduce the reds at 75% um, and paint away, I love paint away shine, it's really good. So we can try using this across here, perhaps on the nose, it's up to you actually, I'm going to leave it like that. Right, um, a darken baby, so if you wanted to add a little bit of contouring in. You can just, hang on, let's put it up a little bit higher, so it's 37%. Start to bring some shape into the baby's head. Right. And if it's too much, just lower it. Okay, right. Now I'm going to, uh, let's just take a snapshot. And then we're going to flatten. And now I'm going to use my deblotch tool, which is there. This one's by Totally Rad. I'm um, going to put it 100%, and I'm hoping this will do some nice work for me. So this again keeps the texture there, but blends the colours a bit more. You have to be careful you don't do too much. Let's have a look. So where are we? We're here and here. I always flick it on and off just to see, so that I can bring back any lost detail. Like there was a place where I felt needed to come back and like here a little bit there here there's not too much we can do about that chin really okay just gonna bring that back okay then i'm gonna flatten Um, we we'll probably sort this area out now. It's like blaring up. It really doesn't like 
fixing that. Just try one more time here. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it's not too bad actually. It's just a complete nightmare. <laughs> uh, adjustment layer, I'm going to go into reds and I'm just going to lighten and move the hue slider over a little bit to turn the pinks more into a warmer colour, warmer red. Uh, gonna command I to invert it so we're painting on the new colour. I'm just going to go here and then I'm just going to see what happens when we do this. Honestly, this is tricky for me anyway. Alright, I'm going to bring it back a bit. This is too much. Just drop the opacity and just bring it back. Alright. Now I'm going to just check the levels, so command L to bring the levels up, just so I can see what's happening, that's fine. Another way I can just check if the face is too bright or too dark is I just use the um, quick selection tool here. And then I just drag it over the baby's face and then do adjustments. This is the levels. And then you can see here and here where we can go darker and we can also go a bit brighter. I'm going to just um, try the deep blotter again. At 100%. And then And then flatten that. Oh my god. I think I'd need to find another tool to do this. But uh, short of just going over every single little dot. Uh, I've just thought of something. Okay, <laughs> just going to rewind that. Uh, we need to use frequency separation for this one. Um, you do have an action with LSP. So I'm going to just click on mine. Frequency separation. I choose 16-bit because I work in TIFF files now. So I'm going to click on there and play. And this adds colour without removing texture. So once I've clicked play, I'm going to go into layers. And then this is the layer which I paint on. And this one here keeps the texture. So I'm going to click on the brush tool and then click on the Alt or Option. Uh, yeah, on your keyboard, click on the Option. I can't even think right now. <laughs> um, and then we're going to zoom in. And now we're going to click on Alt. Now we can select samples of skin colour wherever the wherever the eyedropper is. So, you know, if we wanted to go here, you see how it's just going to colour it. But the important thing is you take the opacity down to about 12, between 10 and 18%, I'd say, unless you're really used to using it. And now I'm going to make the brush size smaller going to click on an area and then I'm just going to go over it like 
this. I forgot about frequency separation. I'm just going to whack it up just so that uh, we can get it done a bit quicker. So this is color correcting, but keeping texture. Uh, let's see now. So I'm sampling and then clicking, clicking, samples, and then that's the color that I'm using on the next space, the next area. If we feel like we've gone a bit too mad, then you can click on the eraser tool, lower the opacity, or like if you've gone over the lines. All right, so we're gonna come back here. Um, that just looks a bit overdone, doesn't it? Okay, that's fine. So we can see before and after, so we can just do a little bit. Uh, and then you just basically just keep on going. When I look close, it really looks yellow there. So I'm just going to correct that. Okay, I think that's all I do. Even that is still a little bit too much. So let's see what's going on there. Um. Okay, I'm just going to leave it. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so annoying. Right, I'm going to flatten. Then I'm just going to go over here to the burn tool, mid-tones, and just bring some colour back here. It was looking a bit flat. All right, so I'm going to adjust the yellows, adjustment layer. I'm going to go into hue and saturation. I'm going to click on the yellows. And I always like to see where the yellows are in the image. So we just come out like this. And then the yellows, we can make them red or, so I'm going to make them a little bit red and then lighten them a bit as well. Okay, just going to flatten. Uh, and then I would take a snapshot. And then I would go into adjustment layer and then click on the curves icon and I'm just going to try linear contrast. It just adds some depth in there. It's a little bit bright because it's just like on the edge of being, it's just, it's not overexposed, but it's right on the edge. Um, so we can keep it up high and then go select the brush tool onto black and then up the opacity and then just bring it back in these areas. Right. And then um, I would just brighten it a touch because we still can. And then the last thing I'd do is I'd use one of my finishing actions. So I would go down and they're the Matty actions by Sunny Melon. I always use them for my lighter shots. I'm just going to select them all and play. And then going to switch them off whilst I decide which one I'm going to use. So that's Matty 1, that's too much. I can't remember what I went with in the end <laughs> the other day. So annoying that I don't know what happened to it. Maybe it seemed like it was like Maddie 5. Uh, I think it was like maybe here. 
I reckon it was Matty Five. So let, I always take it down just so see what's going on. Like that. Okay. Oops. Um, I'm just going to go into adjustment layers. I'm just going to see if it, I can't tell if it's looking too red or not. So. That really isn't making much difference, is it? Like. Maybe plus three, I think I'd leave it like that. Flatten, and then uh, we'll do the vibrant section. And to activate that, you need to come down here and click on this little mask, adjustment mask layer, and then scroll up and click on vibrance. And then you'll see this option come up here. The top one is vibrance, as you can see, it's um, as I, put on my post the other day uh, this is like the smart saturation so it actually lifts or, or saturates the mid-tone of the color whilst keeping the skin tones intact it's, it's really good so if I just show you the difference between vibrance and saturation so if I just put this say 4950 that's vibrance and then do this at the same you can see what happens everything just turns horrible and orange so try to avoid using saturation so I'm just going to pop that up initially to about you can really crank it up actually if you want to and then I would personally just take it off of here so again I've selected the brush tool on black and you can see where I'm taking it off of the layer here and then I'm just going to remove this uh, that really didn't seem to do much, did it? Oh, it's done a little bit. Right, and then flatten. Um, just to finish the image off, I would use, I'd go, sorry, I'll go back, <laughs> rewind. Go into a filter. I'm gonna duplicate the layer first. Go into filter, liquefy, zoom out a bit. And then I am just going to whack this on here, get rid of that. Before actually I done the finishing matty action, I would have seen what other colors are in the backdrop and the floor drop that we don't really want. And on white ones, you tend to get some blue. Can you see it here and here? So we're going to adjustment layers, hue and saturation, select the blue, and then you can up it so you can see where all the blue is. So take that out. I would definitely do this before the matty action normally. And cyan, so just gonna see where that is. So now we've just removed, you can see it now. And then, alternatively, you can change the white balance so it's a little bit warmer. Flatten, and then I'm gonna click on the crop tool. Um, I'm going to select front image. And then I am going to make sure the content aware box is ticked. Put the baby in the middle. A bit more. And then enter. And hopefully it will work some magic for us. Yep, there you go. Just now I need just need to see did I overdo it? Probably. So I'm just going to bring the baby back a bit. Click enter again, just make sure that the content aware box is ticked. And there we go. Just like that. Um, and then I will save. And then the last thing I do, oops, cancel that, is duplicate the layer, go up to filter, camera raw filter, go into basic, Um, come down to clarity and just put 10 in there. Yeah, because of the baby's skin, I probably wouldn't go that much. Maybe just five. And then come down to detail and then sharpening. About 20 in there. 
click OK. And then if there are any areas that you don't want the sharpening and clarity on, then you can just do what I did before, which was click on this little layer mask down here. Make sure it's selected. Command I to invert it. Then click on the brush tool. Make sure you're on white. And then we're going to just paint it off this time, any areas that we don't want. So, you know, we might want to do it. Take it off here. Um, yeah. That little frown, she's really staring at me. <laughs> All right. And then I'm just going to show you the before and after. Go into the history, I'm going to go to the top. And then this is first stage. Oh, actually, if I go back here. Oops. Hang on. Uh, I'm just going to do another snapshot. It'd be easier that way. Right. So, before, first image, raw image. And then the next one, first stage. Second stage, third stage, fourth stage, fifth stage. There you go. Well, I hope that helps. Bye.